Mahindajaro. In 1919, archaeologist R.D. Banaji found what he at first thought was a Buddhist stupa or Buddhist temple. Instead, what he had actually found were the remains of an absolutely immense city. Arranged along a grid plan and likely boasting a population at its height of well over 40,000 people. The Hindujaro was built in the 26th century before Christ and was one of the Harappa's largest cities. Its culture spanned much of what is now India and Pakistan, reaching westwards into Iran. At its height, Mahindajaro was the most advanced city of its time. Yet, Mahindajaro and the civilizations of the Hindus Valley went into rapid decline around 1900 BC and it was suddenly abandoned. Mahindajaro is originally believed to have been called the City of the Cockerel. Its original name was discovered by archaeologists on a city seal. However, the name Mahindajaro actually means the mound of dead men, and it is a truly incredible site. It is one of the largest and the greatest of Earth's early cities. During an archaeological dig after the Second World War, Trinitite was found at Mahindajaro. So, what exactly is Trinitite? On July 16, 1945, near Alamogordo, New Mexico, the plutonium-based Trinity nuclear bomb was tested, and Trinitite is a nickname, basically, for the glassy waste left on the desert floor after the atomic bomb was detonated. Robert Oppenheimer, the architect of the atomic bomb, was firmly of the belief that many deserts on the continents of this planet are in fact the result of prehistoric nuclear warfare. He was also firmly of the belief that Mahindajaro was destroyed between 12 and 15,000 years ago in an ancient atomic war between the Empire of Rama and the Atlanteans. When Robert Oppenheimer made his famous television appearance, he became very emotional when asked about the atomic bomb and began quoting from the ancient Vedic text, the Bhagavad Gita, saying, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. was quoting from, describes a great battle between the Ashvans and the Empire of Rama. The Ashvans were the name given to the Atlanteans by the authors of the Rig Veda. Was Mahindajaro and the Empire of Rama destroyed in an ancient, long forgotten nuclear conflict? Though the idea sounds very far-fetched, we are faced with the fact that there is much evidence to actually support this theory. The ancient Sanskrit Vedic texts are full of amazing stories of different gods and their extraordinary powers and of the battles that took place many, many centuries ago. The Vaimanaka Sastra is a Sanskrit text concerning aerospace technology. It makes the claim that the Vimanas mentioned in the epic Hindu texts were advanced aerodynamic flying vehicles similar to modern day rockets and capable of interplanetary flight. The Vimana flying vehicles are consistently referred to and they are also consistently referred to as weapons of war. The information contained in the Vedas is incredibly detailed. Veda, roughly translated into English, means what we know so far. And what we know so far about the Vedas is that only about 10% of them have actually been translated. 
However, we also know that at least 6,000 years ago or more, they had knowledge of the atom. In the ancient Hindu text, the Empire of Rama in the northern part of India, including some parts of Pakistan, existed 15,000 years ago and existed at the time of the Atlantean civilization, which was ruled by priest kings. The Ashvans, or Atlanteans, had flying craft also, some of which were saucer shaped, some of which were cigar shaped. In the ancient manuscripts, they are described in exquisite detail as having several decks and a dome and portholes. They are described as flying with the speed of the wind and as having a melodious sound. There are three types of Vimana. Some Vimanas were made to travel locally from one place to another. In the second class, Vimanas were used to travel to different countries, and the third class, these flying machines were used to travel to various planets. The ancient Indians who created these Vimana flying ships also wrote manuals about the controls of several Vimana types. Many of these manuals are still in existence and offer an unexpectedly detailed guide for piloting these Vimana flying craft. It is a fact that we are faced with consistent textual evidence of flying machines used in ancient battles perhaps 6 to 12,000 years ago or more, with details that seem to suggest extremely advanced technology. We have ancient manuals on how to pilot these craft, what exactly are we looking at here? And these Vimanas come in many various shapes and sizes, there is the Elephant Vimana with numerous engines, the Agathophora Vimana with two engines and many other types named after animals or birds. To hide the flying machines from enemies, the pilot is instructed to harness the power in the 8th atmosphere layer above the earth, and to attract dark solar rays, and collisions between wind and electricity in the atmosphere, with a resultant glow which is mirrored in the Vimanas. This creates a Maya Vimana or a camouflage Vimana flying machine, or a cloaking device which makes use of mirrors and lenses. Poisonous attacks can be launched which renders the crew of an enemy aircraft unconscious and the Sauda Miniki Kala, which means the science of electronics, describes a sound capturing device and this enables enemy pilots of the Manas to even eavesdrop inside others' planes. They also collected solar energy using a glass tube, eight of them in fact, which absorb the sun's energy. The fuel is even described, it is called Rasa or Quicksilver, which is known today as Mercury. The Mahabharata, another Hindu epic, describes a flying machine belonging to Maya Danava, who was a resident of a planetary system named Taltala. According to this text, Vimanas could apparently travel to the moon and into outer space. From the Vedic text, it would appear that there was a mighty battle between the Empire of Rama and the Atlanteans, resulting in the destruction of Mahindajaro. And with Atlantis' cataclysmic sinking into the depths of the ocean, the battle ended the rule of the Empire of Rama and the entire world descended into a dark age. The extraordinary story of Mahindajaro, or the Mound of Dead Men, began with the discovery of the first ruins and shows that once remnants of the settlement were brought to light, archaeologists found a crater with a diameter of nearly 50 metres, inside of which everything including stone was melted and crystallised together, as if it were melted by some huge temperature. At the edge of the crater were bricks melted and welded together. Hundreds and hundreds of skeletons have also been found in the devastated area that spans approximately 3 metres in diameter. Everywhere there are black, charred and deformed pieces of stone which puzzled and gave great thought to archaeologists until it was realised that these were remnants of ceramic pots fused to one another, probably after being subjected to the same giant temperatures. When the excavations reached the streets, archaeologists were met with a macabre view. Hundreds and hundreds more skeletons found in some of the strangest positions Though the site is unbelievably old, it still has the feel and reminder of why Hiroshima and Nagasaki are known to children of school age the world over for all of the wrong reasons. And like these wastelands, the ruins of Mahindajaro strongly suggest it was turned into ashes by the advanced weapons of the past as well as the neighbouring city of Harappa. 
In the epicenter of the crater, the bricks were found to have been heated to a temperature of over 1,500 degrees Celsius. An archaeological expedition conducted by the Soviet Union at Mahindajaro found that levels of radiation in a skeleton unearthed and levels in general were over 50 times greater than the natural levels of radiation you would expect to find. Many claims have been made suggesting ancient nuclear warfare as the explanation for the finds at Mahindajaro and its sudden abandonment. An Italian aerospace engineer named Antonio Castellini was quoted as saying that what happened at Mahindajaro was not a natural phenomena, as mainstream archaeology and history would have us believe. The aerospace engineer also added that there was no volcanic eruptions or meteor or asteroid impacts that could account for the finds either.